In this video, I'm going to show you a technique from Phil, my partner in Excel Crime, on how to add a column containing a running total in Power Query that doesn't suffer from the performance issues you get with the common approaches you're likely to find on the internet. We've tested it on hundreds of thousands of rows and it evaluates in a couple of seconds. Let's take a look. We all know that a running total or cumulative sum is calculated by adding the previous value to the next. And writing these formulas in Excel is easy, but creating a running total in Power Query is not so straightforward, at least if you want a fast, usable query, that is. I've got a very simple table here that only contains the values that I'll use to illustrate the different techniques. Notice there's 100,000 rows of data. So I'll load the table into Power Query on the Data tab from Table Range. A common approach you're likely to come across is to use list.sum and list.firstn functions. But this approach is extremely slow when working with a lot of rows. And because of that, I'm going to filter to just keep the top 5,000 rows, and that will make it more manageable. This technique requires an index column. So I'm going to add column, index column, and I want it to start from one. Next, I need to add a custom column for the running total. We use list.sum with list.firstn, and list.firstn takes two parameters and returns a list as its output. The first parameter is a list, which in this case is the values in the value column at the previous step, which is added index. The second parameter is a number or condition that tells list.firstn how many elements in the list to return. I'm supplying it with a number specified by the index column that I added. And I'll click OK. And you can see there's my running total. So what's happening here, if we look at the third line where index is three, list.firstn returns a list comprised of the first three items. They are values 36, 63, and 89. And then list.sum adds the values together to give the result 188. And as you can see, by doing this for every row, we generate the running total. Now, what makes this approach slow is that for every row in the table, the value and index lists are re-evaluated. It's like it gets here and it forgets that the lists exist. And then for every row, it goes, oh, I better go and see what these lists are, how many items in them, and check that they contain valid data, etc. And you can imagine doing this 100,000 times for two lists takes a lot of time. Let's give this query a name. I'll call it table with index. Now you can speed up the query by using list buffer. So what I'll do is just duplicate this query and we'll modify it to include the buffer. So let's give it a name. And then in the advanced editor, I can add a line to buffer the list. So after this line here, I want to add in my buffer. We'll call this step buffered values. So list.buffer is just referencing the previous step and it's grabbing the value column from that step. Then I can copy this name and in the last step, I want to replace the reference to the added index step with my new buffered values list. And that's all we need to do. I'll click done. It doesn't look any different, but it runs significantly faster. And what's happening here is list.buffer loads a list into memory where it stays while the query is running. Most importantly, the query doesn't forget about the list. So every time you refer to the list, Power Query doesn't have to go and evaluate it all over again. And this makes using buffered lists significantly faster than non-buffered. There are some trade-offs though. Buffering breaks query folding. So queries to databases can actually be made slower by using buffering. But in this scenario, query folding isn't being used, so there's no downside. However, while this query is a lot faster than the original non-buffered query, there is still an issue. Because the query is using an index column to indicate how many rows or values list.firstn should return and hence be summed by list.sum, the query is still having to evaluate the index list for each row. And trying to buffer the index list actually doesn't help. Even if you did create a buffered index list, 
you'd need to explicitly keep track of what row the query is currently operating on and then use that variable to access the buffered index. And there's just no mechanism to do this in a query like this. Being able to work with lists that are all buffered and explicitly track what row you're working on will give you the best performance in this scenario. And using list generate allows you to do this. Based on a set of initial values and rules that determine how those values change, list generate creates a list of values. Then iteration or looping is controlled by a loop counter. So you aren't evaluating a list on each iteration and you therefore don't need an index column for this approach. Now you may find this next example quite advanced, but you can copy and paste the function I'm about to write and reuse it in your own files. So no need to be able to write this yourself, but I'll still explain it as I go. We start by creating a custom function in a new blank query. And then in the advanced editor, the function will take an input. I'll give it the name values as a placeholder. This is a list and it will return a list. There's just one step called RT, which is short for running total. And I'll use the list generate function, which has four arguments. First, I need to provide the initial values. And because Power Query starts from a zero base, the value at position zero in the list is the first value I want to sum. And because I don't have an index column, we'll declare a variable called counter to use as an index for the values list. And it also starts at zero. While the counter value is less than the number of elements in the values list, continue generating the running total. And the next running total value equals the current running total plus the next value in the values list. And it increments the counter by one. And now add the new running total to the running total list. So to summarize, this will generate the running total and pass in the list of values as the only parameter. The function returns the running total as a list. So I'll click done. Now you can see the function in the list of queries. Let me rename it fx running total. So I'll duplicate the previous query and we'll strip out the last two steps. So we're back to just the first 5,000 rows of the values. And then in the advanced editor, I'm going to add the code for my custom function. So after the last step, we add a comma and on the next line, I need to put my values that I want the running total for into a buffered list to help with performance. And I do this by referencing the previous step and specifying the value column, which is the column containing the values I want the running total for. Now, if your column name is different to value, then you just change it accordingly in this code. So another comma and onto the next line. Here, I'm going to add the running total with the table dot from list function. We'll call this RT. Here we call the running total function and provide it with the buffered values we created above. The next argument is the splitter. Now this should be optional, but the function fails if you use null here or you leave it blank. So I'm going to use the splitter split by nothing function to satisfy this. And lastly, I'm going to call this column RT for running total. Now I need to join this new column to the original columns in the table, albeit there is only one in this example. However, in your file, there's bound to be more. We'll call this step columns. I'll use list.combine with table.toColumns to get the columns from the kept first row step and add it to the list created in the RT step above. Now I need to convert these two lists into a table and I'll use table.fromColumns for this. We'll call this step converted to table. That's pretty self-explanatory. Table dot from columns is made up of the list called columns in the previous step and the column names are found in the kept first row step. And I'll call the new column running total. 
The last thing I need to do is simply copy the name of the last step and place it after the in. I'll finish the hard coding here and we'll close the advanced editor. Now all I have left to do is set the data type here, which is whole number. Now if we look at each step, you can see the stages. So let's start at buffered values. This was the first line of code that I entered. This extracts the values column and converts it to a buffered list that I can then reference in the custom function. At the RT step, I invoked the custom function that calculates the running total, and you can see that here. Then I combined the original columns and the new running total into two lists. And if I click on them and you look down at the bottom, let me make this a bit bigger, you can see this is the list of individual values and this is the list of running total values. I then converted that into a table and lastly set the data type for the running total to a whole number. Now this is currently only operating on 5,000 records so let's see what happens when we change it to say 100,000. So now there's no filter on the list and if I jump to the last step you can see it's instantly calculated the running total. So as promised, this is lightning fast. And although the code is quite advanced, it should be a case of copying the code from this file, which you can download from the link in the video description and simply changing the references to match your files, column and step names. Well, thanks to Phil for this technique. I hope you found it useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.